All right, well, good morning. Great to see everyone. Thank you all for being here today to celebrate. Let me leave a lot of these pens. Are we getting some of these pens later, guys? No, 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 you don't have to hold them. I'm going to put them right here. Um, let me begin again. Thank you all for being here to celebrate our administration's workforce agenda and official state workforce plan. Our Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Lauren Jones, is here. Uh, many thanks to you, Secretary Jones, to you and to your team for the incredible work that you have done in supporting our workforce. Representatives are also here from across our administration because everyone has a hand in supporting a strong workforce. Workforce experts and employers, uh, thank you for your input and your example. I see many representatives in the room here today. I also want to thank Mass AFL-CIO, President Chrissy Lynch, uh, and leaders in the labor movement who are here today, who are critical partners in moving us forward and, importantly, in setting the standard for supporting a workforce. Right now, the workforce has never been more of an important priority than now, an important priority for our economy, an important priority for our state. It's true in Massachusetts, it's true across this country. So this plan that we're talking about this morning is about meeting the moment that we're in and preparing for the future to make sure our state's workers have everything that they need to succeed. Students and workers need pathways to opportunity that are equitable and accessible. Employers need tools to attract, support, and retain talent. Our economy needs a strong workforce. People, human talent, that's always been our greatest asset as a state. And that's why our team has been so focused on many of the new programs and budget investments that we've made. Mass Reconnect, which makes community college now free for people 25 and older. Mass Talent, which creates partnerships with employers and new access for workers to in-demand jobs. Registered Apprenticeship, the proven learn and earn model pioneered by our terrific unions, which we are now investing $4 million per year in. Our new skills-based hiring policy, which leads by example in removing unnecessary degree requirements for good jobs. And the Mass Leads Act, our economic development bill, which will make historic investments in workforce training and help us build an innovation economy that creates great jobs, great careers for people of all backgrounds across all regions. These are just a few of the examples where we're making workforce a priority. The power of this statewide plan is that it brings all of our workforce, education, employer, and state partners together unified with a vision and a strategy. It builds on what's already working in so many instances, and it importantly identifies new strategies to better serve workers, to better meet our needs and the needs of a changing economy. It calls on us to act with inclusive values to support people who have been often underrepresented or underserved and essentially untapped talent in our state. By helping them, we can also meet the needs of employers, large and small, in industries statewide. In everything we do, we're going to measure the results. We're going to make sure that this work has real impact in our state. Our goal is to have the most competitive economy in the world, one that solves the world's greatest challenges and problems while providing opportunity for all of our residents. To do that, we must also set the goal of having the best workforce in the state and the best supported workforce in the state. We have the people and the leaders and the talent. We also know we've got a lot of people with passion to get this done. And now, thanks to Secretary Jones and her team, we have a roadmap to guide that work. I want to thank everyone who's had input into this plan, and I look forward to working with all of you and our administration to make this a reality. And now I'd like to turn it over to our terrific Secretary of Labor and Workforce Development, Lauren Jones.
Thank you so much, Governor Healy, for your leadership um, and your remarks were spot on, um, demonstrating how incredibly important it will be as we move forward and move Massachusetts forward. Today is a really great day. We're able to celebrate the release of the Healy Driscoll administration's first workforce agenda. It's our vision to attract, retain, and develop diverse talent, bringing in untapped talent back into the labor market and meeting the needs of industry and employers. Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll often emphasize teamwork, and this agenda is a result of teamwork over the past several months. It is also a great example of a team working in government and also with employers, academia, labor, and our workforce partners in regions across Massachusetts. So I want to take a minute to thank our partners in this process, including our Mass Hire State Workforce Board members, comprised of nearly 30 leaders across Massachusetts, many of which are here today, plus our sister agencies and secretariats. I see Commissioner McHugh of DTA. We have Commissioner Wolf, who serves on our Mass Hire Workforce Board. Undersecretary Jennifer Maddox is here from Help, um, housing and livable communities, um, as well as Juan Vega representing Secretary Howe, and so many of our team members across all state agencies, quasis, and institutions um, in government and outside of government. So thank you, everyone, for making this a reality. I also want to give a special thank you to my team for your incredible work. I see the LWD crew in the back. Um, from drafting the process to hosting forums and regional sessions, you have worked very hard to make this a reality. Um, thank you also to all my colleagues in the governor's cabinet. Um, through this process, we have and will be breaking down what I often call as government silos to ensure that we are jointly leveraging available state dollars, braiding federal funds, and ensuring that together we are serving, uh, we are best serving our most vulnerable populations we are also meeting this moment to attract, retain, and develop untapped talent, existing talent, and strong and building a strong talent pipeline, and also supporting our employers, large and small, in every region across Massachusetts. We know our workforce challenges will not be solved with one single solution. So how are we to address the range of challenges and ensure that our workforce continues to thrive. Our administration's first workforce agenda sets forth to tackle this. Every four years, the US Department of Labor requires states to complete a workforce plan, especially requiring state agencies that receive federal funding for workforce needs to team up together. Our agenda released today is part of the USDOL state workforce plan which is even more comprehensive and includes um, a lot of great work across several state agencies and under review by the US Department of Labor as part of the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, best known as WIOA. But for the Healy Driscoll team coming together almost a year ago, uh, working collaboratively was a no-brainer. Early in the administration, we got to work. First, I, had the, I have the pleasure of chairing the governor's Workforce Skills Cabinet. As we convened around this time last year, alongside Secretary Howe of Economic Development, Secretary Tutwiler of Education, we decided to also expand the cabinet to include Secretary Walsh of Health and Human Services. Outside of the LWD state budget, significant workforce investments especially lie in education and health and human service budgets. And both secretariats also receive significant funding federal funding, especially for the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, the Department of Transitional Assistance, the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission, among many other agencies. So in our early months, we identified four key priorities for the Workforce Skills Cabinet reflected in our agenda. We also engaged with our Mass Hire Workforce Board, especially lifting up targeted populations such as youth and young adults, individuals with disabilities, our immigrant workforce, individuals formerly incarcerated, low-income households, veterans, and more. Additionally, the state board, along with our workforce skills partners across the state, emphasized the need to close the skills gaps and be intentional in meeting industry needs. 
Regional engage engagement also shined a light on what is already working well locally, what can be scaled and improved, and what needs to be addressed in local and regional clusters statewide. Combined with listening sessions and engaging and reviewing reports and feedback, we now have an agenda that lays out our administration's vision as we think strategically to grow our workforce now and over the next five to 10 years. In the past handful of years, if the past handful of years has taught us anything, we know that workforce needs and opportunities are constantly changing. So we need to be nimble, but this agenda gives a framework, a foundation to embark on key strategies across four focus areas. First, to attract and retain talent in Massachusetts, we need to reduce barriers to employment with the goal of increasing labor market participation and fostering a more equitable workforce. Second, to develop talent, especially for targeted populations often underserved or left on the sidelines, we need to implement strategies that will pave, a more, that will pave career pathways and build talent pipelines and in partnership with industry. Third, this is also an opportunity for Massachusetts as an employer to lead by example. With 40,000 plus employees and executive departments and agencies, we too can be part of the solution to attract, retain, and develop talent. And fourth, to deliver on these strategies, we, need, we know we need to improve our workforce infrastructure, including how we best leverage our mass hire network, and think new and innovatively, recognizing current systems need to evolve with the fast changing nature of how we all attract retain and develop talent. The good news is the agenda is a report that will not sit on a shelf. In fact, we are already getting to work on strategies outlined in the agenda. Take, for example, efforts to reduce barriers to employment. Among strategies, including addressing child care and other caregiving needs, this month, Secretary Tutwiler, Secretary Howe, and I are convening the whole of government task force charged to create a plan to ensure Massachusetts delivers an affordable, accessible, and quality child care system and workforce. As another example, in support of strategy to, to launch a stipend program, LWD released an RFP this month with the goal of launching a program leveraging ARPA dollars to provide stipend funding for eligible qualified individuals who will enroll in certain job training programs in collaboration with Commonwealth Corporation a huge resource that will support greater persistence and success for attracting trainees and developing skilled workers. We also know Massachusetts has a tremendous opportunity to unlock talent among our immigrant population as a key strategy. Yes, this includes work authorized individuals who have newly arrived in our shelters, and it also includes a greater population of immigrants long living here and with international credentials from their home country. Among strategies included on our agenda, we recognize the great opportunity we have as a commonwealth to reimagine how to leverage these existing skills to recredential and provide certifications relevant to the workforce needs and opportunities we have in Massachusetts. And as of today, we have a new leader on the team who will help steer this work forward. The Healy Driscoll administration is pleased to welcome Alicia Ordway as LWD's new Undersecretary of Workforce Development. Welcome, Alicia. We look forward to diving into this work and getting more wins for Massachusetts job seekers, workers, and employers. Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, thank you so much for underscoring the value of teamwork. I think the agenda we have today is a reflection of teamwork, and through this agenda, we will continue to deliver results as we stay focused on our greatest asset. As the governor said, Massachusetts' talent to drive a more affordable, competitive, and equitable commonwealth. At this time, I'd like to introduce Joanne Pikowski, Chair of the Mass Hire State Workforce Board and Assistant Vice President of Workforce Planning and Development at Beth Israel Leahy Health to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Secretary Jones, and thank you for your leadership in bringing so many partners together to craft this plan. Thank you. And thank you, Governor Healy, for including me and the State Workforce Board in this event. Can I ask board members in the room to please raise their hands? Mm. 
I speak on behalf of the board as I share my excitement about the four-year plan we have submitted. This plan emphasizes the importance of supporting our residents not only with job search support, but with reliable transportation and child care as well as stable housing. This plan supports new arrivals to the state who are so important to the growth of the Massachusetts economy with ESOL training and a statewide strategy to support the recredentialing of people who receive their training in another country. This plan acknowledges that all regions of the state are not the same, but have distinct needs that deserve regular state attention. This plan will build upon the many opportunities that have been created with the Mass Reconnect program. And last, COVID seriously disrupted both how employers hire and how job seekers look for support. And this plan will modernize and strengthen the Mass Hire Public Workforce System. Uh, my day job is overseeing workforce planning and development for Beth Israel Leahy Health, um, which has about 37,000 employees. Healthcare is such a critical industry to Massachusetts, and it's one of the industries that has not fully bounced back after the pandemic. We are still struggling to fill the roles that make our hospitals run, from folks who cook the meals and clean the rooms for our patients to nurses who oversee their care. This plan will support our work to attract new job seekers from our communities to our jobs to help each employee continue to grow their skills, credentials, and careers, and to retain a strong, committed, caregiving workforce. Um, I want to just close by thanking the many people, many, many people involved in crafting this plan. Um, thank you to the State Board for advising the process from the mission and vision statement all the way to the final comments. And thanks to the members of the public and the Massachusetts workforce ecosystem who provided comments that helped shape the plan. I truly believe this plan is a roadmap to an equitable, inclusive, and thriving economy. Thank you. And I'm gonna turn it back over now to the governor. Thanks, Joanne. Thank you. Great, well thank you so much, uh, Joanne, for your comments and for the work that you do as chair of the board. And thank you to all the board members for the important service you provide, um, especially as we're engaging in something new here, which is the way we're looking at workforce across the state and across the administration. So many thanks to, uh, to you for that, Joanne, and um, also to Secretary Jones for her leadership and the entire team. As you heard from her directly, the work around workforce is something that extends across the secretariats, just as it extends across our state. And I see a true diversity in stakeholder representation in this room. It is not the first time we've seen a diversity of stakeholder representation in a room like this to talk about a policy announcement. But at the end of the day, both the LG and I firmly believe that the only way we're gonna make meaningful progress on goals we need to and must make is by working together, talking together, seeing where we can work together to forge what is the most optimal path. So really proud and uh, and grateful to all of you who come out to stand with us today on this. I think at this time we're happy to take any questions about our new workforce agenda. Anything on topic from anyone? By the way, there'll be copies of this available. We have it online, and but they're online. In, online, and we um, we do have some. Our climate People chief will be happy that more of you are looking online. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but we do have some hard copy you for. Can visit uh, www mass.gov forward slash workforce agenda. Workforce agenda? Mm -hmm. Okay, great, 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 great. All right, great, terrific. Any questions? Yeah, it's, it's really the latter. I mean, we're mindful of the time that we're in right now looking at revenues. Um, it's really about how do we better strategically align things within the administration? How do we work to support existing programs and structures out there that are delivering, and then where do we make adjustments so that we're making better use of connections, partnerships, networks that will help us get to where we need to go. And I think the nice thing about this, not only for the taxpayer, but importantly for results, is that this is gonna be a more effective means to delivering the kind of workforce that we need. And that's why you heard Secretary Jones just talk about some of the examples where just within our own administration, having for the first time education, health and human services, labor and workforce development in a room together to actually think things through, and then to have the benefit of those conversations with uh, members of the labor community um, who support so many important workforce programs, apprenticeship programs, training programs, 
to have members of the employer community, and it's broad, <laughs> it's not a monolith, um, in the room to talk about you know, how we can all plug in, sync up in ways that are gonna deliver the kind of workforce that we need to meet the moment that we're in, in this state. And as Secretary Jones said, COVID forced us to reimagine workforce. And I think we need to make the very most of that in this time as we look forward. And I'm proud of the team who could have done um, the normal work of preparing a workforce plan to submit to the federal government, but chose in the same way our economic development team could have put together the routine economic development plan for the state that they're required to under law. In both instances, people leaned in and said, all right, how do we actually use this vehicle to do something real, you know, to do something meaningful? Um, to actually get results. And so I appreciate your leadership on that, Secretary Jones. Governor, do you believe that the uh, migrant population in the state is on path to overlooking? I do. It, it's why I have focused from the outset at getting work authorizations. And I'm proud that we as a state have really led when it came to uh, getting folks processed. Um, I've called on the federal government to act for a long, long time. But I also said, you know, we're not going to wait. And so we were able to get uh, representatives from DHS here on the ground weeks ago. That work has continued. I appreciate the work of so many legal services providers, other providers working with our administration. We've now processed 3,000 people just about for work authorization, people who right now are getting jobs, filling employment needs uh, here across the state. Well, I want to make sure we stay on topic, and I'm going to talk more later with anyone who wants to stick around. Um, but I will just say, because you asked in, in relation to, to workforce, which is the subject of today's announcement, that that work does continue. Um, it's also the case that we've seen declining numbers in terms of when I imposed that cap, in terms of the trajectory of where we had been on. Um, uh, but since we've uh, imposed that gap, yes, people continue to come in. But you know what we've been really, but but not to the degree as before. That's the first thing. The second thing is we continue to process people for work authorization. It's a good thing right now that Salem Hospital was able to fill its janitorial and cleaning staff. It hadn't been able to do that for years. So we're continuing to look for opportunities. Uh, it's a it's a different discussion on on the migrant EA issue. But uh, we've got workforce needs and we've got talented people out there across the regions who. Uh, just need that opportunity and I'm confident with a plan like this and knowing all the players that were at the table and will be at the table we've got a great way to plug so many more people in and that's what we've got to do for us to grow as a state and for our communities and residents to truly thrive thank you thanks everybody we'll see you soon okay great, great. thank you terrific great job terrific